Good morning. Welcome to the fourth lecture of this fifth week of ongoing course on understanding and reducing GHG emissions. We are looking at reducing scope 1 and 2 emissions through building design and construction. In this week, we are looking at examples of different sectors of uh, industries of companies and we are trying to understand their emissions and where buildings play a role in reducing or how do they influence the emissions. In today's lecture, we will look at the emissions of IT sector, which is a significant influencer in the world today and how much emissions are these, this particular sector companies are giving. Uh, in the previous lecture, we looked at the petroleum companies, we looked at the entire value chain and then we looked at how the retail companies, the fuel supply companies or distribution companies, how are, where are their emissions placed and how are buildings affecting the real estate assets affecting the emissions of these uh, petroleum companies. In today's lecture, we are going to look at the emissions from, for tech companies, we are talking about largely the IT sector companies and we will look at the specific case study of Microsoft which is again a published, audited and reported uh, uh, data. So starting with why we are choosing to talk about IT sector is because the footprint of the uh, tech companies is significant in today's world. So the global tech industry, it accounts for approximately 2 to 3 percent of the world's carbon dioxide emissions which is a significant number if we look at that. So no other industry, we, uh, we have transportation and other industries for example uh, the uh, industries where manufacturing is happening but a, an industry like a tech industry, IT sector industry accounting for 2 to 3 percent of the world carbon dioxide emission is a significant amount of emission that we are talking about and of that if we look at the five uh, big tech companies which is Amazon, Alphabet, Apple, Microsoft and Meta together they their share of carbon footprint out of this 2 to 3 percent is much higher than all the smaller companies put together. So they have a responsibility, IT sector in general has a responsibility because it is also not maybe not directly responsible for emissions but they are influencer of the lifestyles and also the emissions that are going to uh, accrue the through the users that use these tech companies. Now if you look at the scope 1, 2 and 3 for these IT sector companies, these tech companies, scope 1 is emissions that are resulting directly from the business activities, again stationary combustion or the uh, transportation fleet or fuel for backup power, all that. The scope 2 emission is the, the purchased electricity. So basically we are talking about again the electricity that is going to be used in the facilities in the business operations. And scope 3 is again a large value chain and here also we are looking at a very large value chain because it is the user that is going to be using the product. So all the emissions that are, uh, that are going to accrue from the user using the products of this these tech companies is going to go in scope 3. Also the upstream activities for example manufacturing and production of the hardware is also going to go in scope 3 but upstream. So if you look at this particular figure, if this particular figure here on the screen, we will see that scope 1 is the direct emission that is coming from uh, activities, that is coming from activities such as uh, diesel generator or warehouse, the usage of uh, transportation fleet or maintenance vehicles or support vehicles in the warehouses and all. But there is a significant amount of scope 2 indirect emissions that are going to accrue from the purchased electricity, production of the purchased electricity elsewhere and that is a significant amount which is coming due to the use of electricity in the data center, in the offices and that is we will see in one of the case studies for Microsoft that we are going to take up that it is a significant portion and hence the 
strategies that are going to be implemented in design of these buildings, these data centers and offices is a significant, uh, it, it, this solution plays a, plays a significant role in reducing the emissions, the scope 2 uh, emissions. In scope 3, we are talking about manufacturing of hardware, the raw material extraction, the transportation of all this hardware to the, uh, to the centers, the, to the operational offices. And scope 3 is uh, also the use of these products and the uh, disposal of the hardware, the end of life uh, disposal of the hardware or maybe the reuse of it. So, if the hardware is designed and manufactured in a manner that it can be used, then also it reduces significant amount of scope 3, the downstream uh, emissions. This is again from the report that is uh, that Microsoft has published, reported. So, here we will again see the different type of companies. For example, we have the uh, upstream hardware manufacturing, downstream hardware disposal and in between we have the operations, cloud operations. So, if we look at these three companies and we look at the activities that is manufacturing of server, then we have the uh, Microsoft as a company here, we have circularity partner and we have cloud customer. So, all the activities that the cloud customer does, the customer who uses the products are again going to be scope 3 for all the three companies which are part of the value chain of this tech company Microsoft. So, this is going to remain scope 3 for all the companies here which has been the case with fuel company, which has been the case with all other companies uh, that we have seen so far. If you look at the cloud operations, the operations that are happening, it is primarily under the scope 1 for scope 1 and 2 for Microsoft and here clearly you would see that it is, uh, it is going to go in scope 2. If you are looking at the hardware manufacturing, the server manufacturer, uh, manufacturing process is going to be scope 1 and 2 for the, for the uh, hardware manufacturing uh, company, the server manufacturing company. For Microsoft, these two activities are going to go in scope 3, upstream and downstream. For circularity partner, where we are talking about reusing the hardware. So, for, for the circularity partner, the hardware disposal activity is going to be scope 1 and 2 and for the circularity partner, the previous layers do not count as part of the scope, any scope of emissions. So, this is the entire value chain and the different companies that are going to be involved. Now, coming to the Microsoft case study, Microsoft for last couple of years has been publishing this environmental sustainability report. And as I said in the previous lecture, if we cannot reduce, if we cannot escape the emissions from happening due to certain uh, uh, activities in the value chain. We can also offset it by the carbon capture and sequestration activities parallelly, but it has the incremental costs that also we understood uh, in the earlier lectures. So, we can make it net 0, net 0 does not imply that there is no emission happening, it implies that the equal amount of emissions that are being released the same amount is also being captured and sequestered from the atmosphere. So, in the atmosphere, in the environment at the end, the total amount of emission is 0. So, the amount sequestered is equal to the amount produced and that is the strategy that Microsoft has adopted to reduce its emissions. So, for example, in the category of waste, they are talking about reuse and recycles of servers. So, earlier against the servers being disposed of, they are now uh, thinking of, they, they, they are now using, reusing and recycling the servers, so, so which is up by almost 80 percent. If you look at water, so uh, they are investing in projects where the replen replenishment projects are undertaken, the harvesting projects are undertaken. So, not directly the water is being used in their facilities, but they are uh, investing in water related pro uh, projects. They are also investing in ecosystem related projects where they are protecting 
acres of forested land, the uh, natural habitat in different countries. So, these are all carbon capture projects which are offsetting the emissions that are produced elsewhere through the value chain, which is one of the ways in which the net emissions can be can be reduced through the entire value chain of the company and the footprint can be significantly reduced. But if we look at the absolute number of GAG emissions that are being released due to the through the value chain of this entire it's this company, this is going to remain there. Those much emissions are going to be released in the environment, but captured elsewhere. So, if we look at the intent and the aim that Microsoft has set for itself, it intends to become carbon negative by 2030 and how do they intend to do that? So, they are already in the process of doing that and if we look at the numbers, so this is des this is not implying that the business is going down, the business has to grow. So, if we look at the scope 3 emissions, we will see that from financial year 20 to 22, the scope 3 emissions have increased, which means that the business has increased, the users have increased and the scope 3 emissions at the downstream end has increased as we have seen the breakup. But if we look at the scope 2 emissions here, we will see that the scope 2 emissions have significantly come down close to almost 40 percent down from the 2020 numbers. If we look at the, the scope 1 emissions, which we saw as the generators, on site generators and on site equipment usage. So, that is increasing which is directly in proportion to the, to the business expanding and the business increasing. So, we clearly understand that the business for IT companies is here to stay and it is increasing. There are more and more users of these uh, products, but overall if we look at that, uh, we see that the net emissions from these companies, they have to go down and that is what the report of Microsoft tells. Now, how are scope 1 and 2 emissions being brought down? So, this is scope 3 and uh, just uh, as we had seen for fuel companies, there are different categories of scope 3 that they have identified including purchase goods and services, capital goods, fuel and energy related activities, upstream transportation, downstream tra transportation, business travel, employee commuting which are the typical heads under the scope 3. But if we look at the scope 1 and 2 emission, one activity which they have identified as a primary activity for reducing 1 and 2 uh, scope emissions is to ensure energy efficiency in all their buildings. So, there are large data centers and uh, corporate offices, office buildings that the tech giant owns and operates in. So, the, the primary activity that has been identified is to ensure that all these buildings are designed as energy efficient and that is the key first step in reducing emissions that is part of the report. So, as a policy they have clearly mandated that all future built data centers will be LEED gold certified and they are encouraging in transparency they are encouraging transparency in reporting the numbers, the energy consumption numbers on their various sites. So, they are promoting energy efficiency and sustainability in all their buildings as a key parameter, which is what I am intending to emphasize that how all this can be done. Also in scope 3 emissions, they have identified the reduction of construction and deconstruction waste of the buildings and data centers again. If we look at the scope 3 emissions for this IT company, they have also identified that reducing the construction and deconstruction waste is a key activity which will reduce the emissions from their entire value chain. This might be slightly less significant as compared to the energy efficiency policy and the sustainability policy that is that has been placed there to reduce scope 1 and 2 emissions, but it is identified as one of the significant fact, uh, activities again. I will stop here with this example and we will look at another example in the last lecture of this week tomorrow. So, thank you very much for being with me. I will see you tomorrow with a new example. Thank you. Bye-bye.